Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE. We're here for the AWS Executive Summit, part of reInvent 2021. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We've got a great segment focused here on HAFOD, Art of the Possible is the segment. Josh Baines, Chief Executive of HAFOD, and Jamie Smith, Director of Research and Innovation, and Leticia Calutu, who's the Global Lead of Conversational AI at Accenture. Thanks for joining me today for this Art of the Possible segment. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about HAFAD and what you guys are doing with the community, because this is a really compelling story of how technology and home care is kind of changing the game and, and putting a stake in the ground. Yeah, so HAFAD is one of the largest not-for-profits in Wales. Um, we employ about 1,400 colleagues. Um, we have three strands of, of service, which focuses on key demographics of people who are vulnerable and socioeconomically disadvantaged. Our three core strands of service are affordable housing. Uh, we provide several thousand homes to people in, in housing need uh, across, across Wales. We also are an extensive provider of social care provision, both residential and in the community. Um, and then we have a, a third tier, which is um, a hybrid in between. So that supports people who are not quite ready for uh, independent living, but uh, neither are they uh, ready for residential care. So that's a, a supported provision. Um, I suppose what, what one of the things that Mark's have a, out and why we're here in this conversation is that we're uniquely placed as one of the organizations that actually has a research and innovation capacity. And it's the work of the research and innovation capacity led by Jamie that brought about this collaboration with Accenture, um, which is giving great meaning and benefit to thousands of our customers and hopefully universal application as, as it uh, develops, John. You know, this is really an interesting uh, discussion because multiple levels, one, the pandemic accelerated this need. So I want to get comments on that. But two, if you look at the, the future of work and work and home life, you're seeing the, the convergence of where people live. And I think this, this idea of having this independent home and the ecosystem around it is going to, is a societal impact as well. So what brought this opportunity together? How did this come together with Accenture and AWS? I'm going for Jamie and Letitia. Yeah, I can I can start. Well, we um, we were uh, trying to apply for the LC Edging Grand Challenge uh, in in the UK. Um, so the the United Kingdom recognised the need uh, for change uh, around independent living, and and run a, a grand challenge, uh, and then we got together uh, as part of this grand challenge. Uh, you know. Uh, we had some technology we had trialed with Age UK uh, before, and we had over housing, housing association. Uh, Afford was really keen uh, to actually uh, start trying some of the technology with some of the um, uh, resident, and 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 we also worked with uh, Swansea University, which is doing a lot of work around uh, social isolation and and loneliness, and we came together. Uh, to do uh, to to kind of pitch for the grand challenge, and we went quite far actually. Uh, and unfortunately, we didn't win. Uh, but we had built such a great collaboration that we couldn't really let it be, uh, you know, not going any further. And we decided to uh, all uh, continue to invest in this idea. And and now we hear, you know, probably. Uh, uh, 18 months on uh, with a number of people at Afford uh, using the technology and, and, a, and a number of, of feedbacks and returns coming back and us having a grand ambition to actually go much broader and, and scale uh, this solution. Joss and Jamie, I'd love to get your reaction and, and commentary on this trend of tech for good because I mean, I'm, I'm sure you didn't wake up and say, oh, this, we're going to do some tech for good. You guys have an environment, you have an opportunity, you have challenges, you're going to turn into opportunities. But if you look at the, the global landscape right now, things that are jumping out at us are looking at the impact of social media on people. You got the pandemic with isolation. You're seeing, this is a first uh, order problem in this new world of how do we get technology to, to change how people feel and make them better in their lives? Yeah, I think for us, uh, the first has to be a problem to solve. There's got to be a question to be answered. And for us, that was in this instance, how do we mitigate loneliness and how do we 
we take services that rely on person-to-person -person contact and are not particularly scalable and replicate those through through technology somehow. And even if we can do 10% of the job of that in-person service, then for us it's worth it because that is scalable. And there are lots of small interventions we can make using technology, um, which is a really efficient way for us to support people in the community when we just can't be everywhere at once. So John, just to add, I think that we have about 1,500 people living in households that are living alone and isolated. Um, and I think the issue for us um, was more than just about technology um, yeah. because a lot of these people don't have access to basic technology features that most of us would take for granted. So for us, this is a, a two-pronged journey. One is about improving accessibility to tech and familiarizing people so that they're comfortable with these, with these devices and technology. And two importantly, um, make sure that we have the, the right means to to uh, help people reduce their loneliness and isolation. So the opportunity to trial something over the last 12 months, something that's bespoke, that's customized, that will undoubtedly be tweaked as we go forward, has been an absolutely marvelous opportunity. Um, and, and for us, the, the, the collaboration with, with Accenture has been absolutely key. I think what we've seen during COVID is, is cross-fertilization. Uh, we've seen multidisciplinary teams. We've had engineers, architects, manufacturers, and clinicians and scientists all trying to develop new solutions around COVID. Um, and I think this probably just exemplifies the spirit of post-COVID where industry, and in our case, quasi-public sector uh, and academia are working together. Yeah, that's a great example and, and props to everyone there and congratulations on this really, really important initiative. Let's talk about the home care solution. What does it do? How does it work? Uh, take us through what's happening. Okay, so home care is actually a, a platform um, which is obviously running on AWS uh, technology. Um, and, and, and this particular platform is uh, the service offered are uh, accessible via voice uh, through the Alexa uh, device. Uh, we use the Echo Show to be able to uh, use voice, but also um, uh, visuals uh, to kind of make the technology more accessible for end user. On the platform itself, we have a series of, uh, of services available out there. Um, we connecting in the background a number of, of services from, uh, from the community. Uh, so in, in the particular case of AFID, you know, we uh, we had something around shopping during the pandemic, uh, where you know we had uh, you know people uh, having you know wanting to have access to their food bag, or we also had you know during the pandemic there was some um, you know need for having access to financial coaching and things like that. So we actually brought all of the service on the platform in the skills, and the skill was really learning. How to uh, how to interact uh, with the end user, and and it was all customized for um, them to be able to access those things at uh, you know in, in a very easy way. It did work almost too well because <laughs> some of our end users have been uh, kind of you know have not been. Um, you know, digital literate before, and you know, it, it was working so well. They were like, "But why can't it do <laughs> pretty much anything on the planet? <laughs> why can't it do this, uh, <laughs> yeah, this or that?" Uh, so the expectation were really, really high. Uh, but you know, we we did manage to uh, you know bring comfort uh, to uh, Afford residents in a number of their daily uh, kind of uh, need. You know. Some of the things during COVID, because we, you know, people couldn't meet face to face. There was some challenge around understanding what events are running. Uh, so the coaches would publish events, um, you know, through the skills, and people would be able to subscribe and go to the event and, and meet together virtually instead of physically. Um, a number of things that, that that really kind of brought a voice uh, enabled experience for those end users. You know, you mentioned that people like the solution just before we get, I want to get to Jamie in a second, but I want to just bring up something that you brought up. This is a digital divide evolution because digital divide, as Josh was saying, is that not about technology. First you have access, you need access, right? First, you know, probably it's broadband or internet access. And then you have to get the technology in the home. But then here, it seems to be a whole nother level of digital divide bridging to the new, new heights. 
Yeah, completely, completely. And I think that's where, you know, COVID uh, um, has really accelerated uh, the digital divide before the solution was was put in place for uh, Harvard uh, in the sense that, you know, people, you know, couldn't move. And if they were not digitally literate, they, they, it was very hard to have access to services. Um, and now we brought them, brought this solution, you know, in the comfort of their own home and they have the access uh, to the services that they, they wouldn't have had otherwise, yeah. um, you know, on, on their own. Uh, so another, it is definitely helping. Yeah. It's just another example of people refactoring their lives or businesses with technology. Jamie, what's, what's your take on the innovation here and the technical aspects of the home care solution? I, I think the fact that it's, um, it's so easy to use, it's personalized, it's a, it's a digital companion for the home. It overcomes that, that digital divide that we talked about, which is really important. Um, if you've got a voice, you can use home care uh, and you can interact with it in this, in this really simple way. And, and what I love about it is the fact that it was based on what our customers told us they were finding difficult during this time, during the early lockdowns of the, the pandemic. Those 1,500 or so people Jazz talked about who were living alone and at risk of loneliness. Now we spoke to a good number of those through a series of welfare calls and we found out exactly what it is yeah. they, they found challenging. What were some of the things we were able to what were some of the things that they were um, they were finding challenging? So tracking how they feel on a on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, what's my mood like, what's my well-being like, and knowing how that, that changes over time. Um, just keeping the fridge and the pantry stocked up. Yeah. Uh, what can I cook with these basic ingredients yeah. that I've got in my home? You could be signposted to basic resources to help you with that. Staying connected to the, the people who are really important to you. But the bit that shines out for me is the interface with our services, with our neighborhood coaching service, where we can just give these little nudges, these little interventions, just to mitigate and take the edge off that loneliness for people. And we can see the potential of that coming out to the pandemic, where you can really encourage people to interact with one another, to be physically active and do all of those things that sort of mitigate against loneliness. Let me ask you a question, because this is, I think, a very important point. The, the timing of the signaling of, 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 of data is super important. Could you comment on the relevance of having access to data if you're getting something connected, when you're connected like this? I can only imagine the benefits, it's all about timing, right? Knowing that someone might be thinking some way, or whether it's a tactical, you know, in any scenario, timing of data, the right place at the right time, as they say. What's your, what's your take on that? Because it sounds like what you're saying is that you can see things early when people are in the moment. Yeah, exactly. So if there's a trend beginning to emerge, for example, around somebody's well-being, which has been on a, a low trajectory for a number of days, um, that can raise a, a red flag in our system and it alerts one of our neighborhood coaches just to reach out to that person and say, well, John, you know, what, what's going on? Yeah. You haven't been out for a walk for a few days. We know you like to walk, uh, what's happening? And, and these early warning signs are really important when we think of you know, the long-term effects of loneliness and how getting upstream of those and um, preventing it reaching a point where it moves from being a problem into being a crisis. And the earlier we can detect that, the more chance we've got of these negative long-term outcomes uh, being mitigated. You know, one of the things we see in the cloud business is kind of separate track, but it kind of relates to the real world here that you're doing is automation and AI and machine learning bring in a lot of value uh, if, if applied properly. So how are you guys seeing, because almost imagine that patterns are coming in, right? You see patterns in the data. How does AI and analytics technology improve this process, especially with the well-being and emotional well-being of, of the elderly? Mm -hmm. I think one of the things we've learned, um, you know, through the pilots that we've done is, you know, uh, there's not one size fit all, you know, all those people are very different individuals. They have very different habits. You know, there's some people not sleeping overnight. <laughs> there's some people, you know, um, you know, wanting to be out early, wanting to be social. Some people you have to pull in uh, much more. So it's definitely not one size fit all. And it, it is, you know, automation and digitalization of those kind of services is really 
challenging because if they're not personalized, you know, it doesn't really catch the um, the interest or the need of, of the individuals. So, so for me as an IT professional being in the industry for like uh, 20 plus year, I think this is the time where personalization has really a true meaning, personalization at scale for those people that are, um, you know, not digitally literate, uh, but also in more vulnerable uh, settings because uh, because there's just so many different angles um, that can make them vulnerable. Um, maybe it's their body, maybe uh, maybe it's, uh, you know, the economic condition, their social condition, you know, there, there's so many variation of all of that. So, so that I think this is one of the use cases that has to be powered by technology to complement uh, the, human, the human side of it. If we really want to um, start scaling the, 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 the services we provide to, uh, to 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 people in general, meaning obviously, you know, in all the Western country now, we all growing old. <laughs> you know, it's no secrets, yeah. Uh, so, you know, in 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 twenty years time, you know, we will, you know, the majority of everybody will be old, uh, you know, and 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 we obviously need people to take care of us. And at the moment, we don't have <laughs> that population to take care of us coming up. So, really, to crack on. Um, to crack on on those kind of challenges, we really need to have technology powering, um, powering and just helping uh, the human side um, to make it more, uh, uh, you know, efficient, connected and human. It's interesting. I just did a story where you have these these bots that look at the facial recognition via cameras and can detect for either in hospitals and or in care patients how they feel. So the, can you see that where, the, where this is going, um, Josh? I got to ask you where where how this all this changes the home care uh, model and how how far it works. Your workforce, the careers, culture, the consortium you guys are bringing to the table, partners. You know, this is an ecosystem now. It's a system. Yes, John. I think that probably it's also worth talking a little bit about um, the the pressures on on state governments around public health issues which are coming to the fore. Um, and clearly we need to develop um, alternative ways that we agree, that we engage with mass audiences and technology is going to be absolutely key. Um, one of the challenges I still think that we've got to resolve here at the UK level, and uh, this is probably a global issue, is about data protection. Um, when we're talking to cross-governmental agencies, it's about sharing data and establishing protocols and we've enjoyed uh, a few um a few challenging conversations with with, with colleagues uh, around data protection so um i think those those need to be set out in the context of, of the journey of this particular uh, project i think that what's what's interesting around covid is that uh, has it materially changed the nature in which we do things um Probably not in, in, in that our focus and outlook have remained the same. Um, but what we're seeing is very clear evidence of the ways. That, I mean, who would have thought that 12 months ago that the majority of our workforce would be working from home? Um, so, rapid mobilization to ensure that people can use their IT at home effectively. And then, um, how does that relationship? impact with people in the communities who we're serving, some of whom have got access to technology, others who haven't. So that's been, I think, the biggest change, and that is a fundamental change in the design and delivery of, of future services that, that organizations like us um, will be providing. So I would say that overall, some things remain the same by and large, but technology is having an absolutely profound uh, change in the way that yeah. our engagement with, with customers will, will go forward. Well, you guys are in the front end of some massive innovation here with this, are the possible, and that, you know, you're really delivering impact. And I think this is an example of that. And you brought up the data challenges. This is something that you guys call privacy by design. This is a cutting edge issue here because there are benefits around managing privacy properly. And I think here, your solution clearly has value. Right, and no one can debate that. But as these little blockers get in the way, yeah. what's, the, what's your reaction to that? Because this certainly is something that has to be solved. I mean, it's, it's a problem. 
Yeah. So we designed the solution. Uh, we, I think we had uh, when we designed or co-designed it with your end users. Actually, uh, we had uh, up to fourteen lawyers working with us at one point in time, looking at different kind of angles. Um, so definitely, uh, really tackle you know the the the, the solution with, with privacy by de by design in mind. I think some of the um, uh, and, and with end users, but obviously you can't co-design with thousands of people. You have to co-design with a representative subset of a cohort. Yeah? And, and, and some of the challenge we find is obviously, uh, you know, the media. I've done a lot of scaremongering <laughs> around a technology, AI, and all of that kind of things, especially for people that are not necessarily digitally literate, people that are just not in it. And, 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 you know, when we go and deploy the solution, people are a little bit worried, you know, when we make them, you know, we obviously explain to them what's going to happen, if they're happy, if they want to consent and all of that kind of things. Um, but there, there was, you know, the, the, the people are, are, are scared, um, you know, they're just jumping on the technology and on top of it, we're asking them some question around consent. So I think it's just that, um, the solution is super secure and <laughs> we've gone through millions of, of hoops, you know, within Accenture, but also with, with Avid it, uh, it, itself, <laughs> you know, so it's been taken. It's, it's more that like the, the type of user we're deploying the solution to are um, just not in that world and are not a little bit worried about sharing. Not only they're worried about sharing with us, uh, but, you know, in home care, you know, there's, there's an option as well to share some of that data with your family. And, and, and there we also see, you know, people are, are kind of okay to share with us, but they don't want to share with their family because um, they don't want to, they don't want to have too much information uh, kind of going, um, you know, potentially worrying or bothering some of their family member. So there is definitely a huge education kind of a uh, angle. Um, to, uh, to 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 embracing the, the technology, not only not only when you create the solution, but when you 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 actually de de deploy it with and, with, the, with users. It's, it's a themselves. fabulous project. I am so excited by this story. It's a great story. It has all the elements: technology, innovation, societal impact, data privacy, social interactions, whether it's with family members and others, internal, external, in to themselves. Uh, you guys are doing some amazing work. Thank you for sharing. It's a great project. We'll keep track of it. My final question for you guys is what comes next for the home care after the trial? What are Hafford's plans and hopes for the future? Maybe if I just give an overview and then uh, invite Jamie and Letitia. Uh, so for us, um, without conversations, you don't create possibilities. And, and, and this really is a reflection of the culture that we try to engender. So, um, my, my ask of my, my team is to remain curious, um, is to continue to explore opportunities because it's home care up today, it could be something else tomorrow. Um, we also recognize that we live in a world of collaboration. We need more cross-industrial partnerships. Um, we'd love to explore more things with Accenture, Amazon, uh, others as well. Um, so that's principally um, what I will be doing is ensure that the culture uh, invites that, and then I hand over to the clever people like Jamie and Letitia to, to get on with the, with the technology. Well, I, I think for, for me, we've already learned uh, an awful lot about home care, and there's clearly a lot more we can learn. We, we'd love to build on this initial small scale trial and see how home care could work at a bigger scale. So, how would it work with thousands of users? How do we scale it up from a cohort of 50 to a cohort of 5,000. How does it work when we bring different kinds of organizations into that mix? So what if, for example, we could integrate it into healthcare so a variety of services can have a holistic view of an individual and interact with one another to put that person on the right pathway, and maybe keep them out of the health and care system for longer, actually reducing um, the costs to the system in the long run and improving that person's outcomes. Um, that kind of evidence speaks to decision makers and political partners. And I think that's the kind of evidence we need to build. Yeah. Financial impact there is brutal, it's great. It's a great financial impact yeah. to the system. Efficiency, better care, everything. 
Yeah. And we're 100% on board for, for whatever comes next. Letitia, what about you, great, Letitia? Great program you got there. Uh, amazing story. Thank you for sharing. Um, congratulations on this awesome project. So much to unpack here. I think this is the future. I mean, I think this is a case study of represents all the moving parts that need to be worked on. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the art of the possible here inside theCUBE, part of AWS reInvent uh, Executive Summit. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.